Hey there, and welcome to my opinion slash trailer review of the new trailer for Avatar 2 The Way of Water. I've only done this one other time when it came to She-Hulk, so I never planned on making an intro video. Now I'm going to work on making an intro video since, who knows, maybe more trailers will come out that I actually want to review. So this was released during my AM shift, and as people know me and get to know this channel, I work in AM shift and then the PM shift, and it sucks. I just hit 60 subscribers today. Thank you, whoever you are. As you guys have seen in the past, I don't know who it is. It didn't tell me on my notifications, but awesome. 60 and we're, we're climbing, we're keep going. Oh, get up here, you're too slow. Move it, move it. And I'm excited to say the least, but let's pour some premium vodka, the 21 stuff here. And I gotta say, guys, as you would expect from James Cameron. His name is James, James Cameron, the bravest pioneer. I eventually on break watched it three times, but I had to come home, pop in the iMac, turn the lights off, and Within the first like 20 seconds, the music and the animation. I'm just like, holy shit. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. You can say what you want about Cameron. You can say what you want about the first Avatar, but you can't fucking deny the guy's visuals. Oh no, that's all just special effects. Now this one I'm making different than my She-Hulk trailer reaction only because my channel's slowly growing and I'm not worrying about getting demonetized since I'm not monetized yet. But I also don't want to get my stuff banned or send some kind of message like, hey, you're showing too much trailer footage and watching it. And I still don't understand how these, these companies and YouTube does that. So what I'm going to do is, as I usually do with trailers and just any kind of footage, do my six second rule, show some footage, then talk about it. And, you know, the point is you can get a lot done in six seconds. He's as bad at sex as I am. All joking aside, let me pour this and goddamn, I can just, you know, James Cameron. The bar has been lowered to depths we can't even fathom. If anyone can go down there and raise it back, it's me. Cameron is raising the bar. I also didn't have time, as you know, with my busy schedule to make a video and I'm going to segue my trailer reaction into something else because Avatar was re-released a few weeks ago and I seen it twice. I saw it one time in RPX 3D and a second time in 4DX. Now if you've never seen RPX, if you're not sure what RPX is, basically imagine a standard theater screen but it's about 35% bigger and also louder and the seats are way more comfortable. It usually costs like four extra bucks and only for certain films it's worth it. For Avatar to say the least it was definitely fucking worth it. Now 4D. My sister has yet to see anything in 4D. I'm not sure where you are, like my buddy Luke, you know, um, if you have 4D where you live, and only certain states and certain areas are doing 4D. I got out of work on a Saturday at 1 p.m. It was a two-hour drive to Syracuse, New York, to see Avatar in 4D, and then a freaking three-hour movie, and then two hours driving fucking back home. To say the least, I got done at 1 p.m., didn't get home until 11 o'clock at night. But to see Avatar in 4D, it was fucking worth it. This was worth the 500 mile drive. If you're not sure what 4D is, basically, I mean, I'm in New York, a standard ticket right now for an adult is going for about 15 bucks. 4D is 20. And so for the extra $5, best believe when I say it's fucking worth it. But what is 4D? Well, the seats are breaking up until basically uh, seats of four, and it's kind of like a little bar section, but right in front of you, there's another bar. And it, it doesn't douse you by any means, but just imagine as you're watching Avatar or any kind of movie, Anytime you see waterfalls or water sequences, you're splashing the face by like a thin mist of water. You know, it's not going to douse you. It doesn't hit you in the face, but it's kind of like a psss, you know? Do you want me to throw my glass of water in her face? The biggest thing is on the sides of the theaters are these massive ass fans. So it seems like the, uh, the ships there and helicopters coming down when they're blowing and you see all the wind elements and leaves, you're getting hit in, in the sides by massive wind. And like there's one scene in the film, and if you've seen Avatar, where all the humans are taking these gas uh, grenades and are throwing them out to take the Navi and make them spread. As it's happening, right in front of the theater, you're seeing freaking smoke come up and just doom, 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 and the lights are flashing and then the entire theater is filled with smoke. Nothing like offensively, you know, bad smelling or nothing like that. It doesn't kill your vision, but just it's cool and it's interactive. But the main thing is the shaking. So imagine sitting in a seat and every single time a gunshot goes off, the seat is shaking, okay? And then when you have a character like Jake or Natiri 
and they're like they're taking those dragon creatures and they're going down as they're going down your seat is going down with you as they're going back up your seat is going back up so just imagine all the flying sequences your your seat is constantly going back and forth and back and forth and to the side and to the side and it's constantly shaking and to say the least don't have any kind of popcorn because your popcorn is going all over the fucking place it's Imagine watching a movie basically being on a roller coaster ride. For the extra $5, it's fucking fantastic. And my sister, my nephew, my brother-in-law, we all walked out and we're like, you know what? Avatar is what it is. Either you love it or you hate it. It doesn't change the story by any means. But I can tell you, I've seen Top Gun Maverick. America, fuck yeah! In 4D this year, and Top Gun Maverick was easily the best experience I had in 4D. But now Avatar has got to be a little bit higher only because Avatar is one of the films where it's not, you know, the best film on TV. It doesn't have the best story. Let's admit to it, boys and girls. But it's fun. But as a theater experience and a 3D experience, you've never seen anything like this. Now, what happened? James Cameron, and there's this guy I linked it before with um, a news article called Avatar Guy. Avatar Guy on YouTube had a comparison of uh, 12 years ago until, until 2022, and Cameron added the FPS and, and the um, HDR frame rate. So Avatar is 13 years old, and still to this day, it is easily, hands down, the most beautiful fucking film I have ever seen. And don't even compare, like, the mocap and Avatar to, say, She-Hulk, because, ew. I'm gonna vomit. It was the best experience I've had in 2022, it makes me that much more excited to see Avatar 2 in 3D and also see it in 4D. Ooh, I am so excited! How does the Avatar 2 trailer start? Well, there's this beautiful underwater sequence and we get to see a very young female, Na'vi. Who is she? We're not sure yet. But we get to hear the voice of somebody familiar and it's Sigourney Weaver. Dad, I know you think I'm crazy. In case you didn't watch the first film, which apparently if you watch me, you're, you you had to watch the first film, but the character of Grace, she didn't make it at the end of the movie. And she's talking to Jake Sully, and she's like, Dad, I can feel her. I can hear her heartbeat. And he's like, what does it sound like? She's strong. And you're thinking to yourself that, is this Grace or is this Awa, which is, you know, the Navi's all mother. And we also get to see Neytiri and look, she's pregnant. So apparently Jake was getting busy the past five or 10 years and and we're still not sure by the trailer what's going on. And I have to give them credit before we go further into the trailer. No spoilers! I've said the past four, five, six fucking years, whenever, that so many trailers are butchering the plot of the film. They're giving too much away. The first Avatar trailer, and now this one, doesn't give anything away. I mean, all we know is that, you know, Sigourney Weaver is mo into a younger Na'vi, and that's it. That's all we know, and we have no details on the plot, what it's about, and for me, that's a fucking good thing. And I salute you. Because now guess what? I get to go in, I get to be surprised. There's no spoilers. I have no idea what's going on. And that's a beautiful thing that I've wanted from so many mainstream movies for the longest time period. So let's all, you know, let's move forward. So after like a minute, it says, you know, from James Cameron and Return to Pandora. And I'm not going to hold high. I got goosebumps. The music, the score, the visual effects, some like big kind of whale creature, Navi, riding these dragon creatures. I'm like, yeah, James. Yeah, I'm ready to come back to Pandora. I'm so sad. And thank you, James, for yet again raising the bar. Descending to 1,000 feet. I don't see the bar yet. Looks like it must have sunk pretty low. And yeah, we just have like basically a brief exchange between Jake and Natiri, and he says, I need you to be strong. We see more beautiful underwater sequences, some big whale creatures, the mech, whatever machines that they had in the first film, they're back. They show Natiri with a big bow. And that's pretty much it, which for me is fantastic. It doesn't give away anything, and I'm fine with that. So at the end of the day, that's all I can say. I hope you like this segment into my kind of breakdown with Avatar 2 but also me just real quick talking about the Avatar 1 Remastered. Now, I won't lie. Again, I know Avatar 1 has some flaws. I know some people either they love it or they hate it. For me, I'm kind of in the middle. I acknowledge the film has flaws, but I also have to respect James Cameron and respect just the hard work and dedication. And anybody can go YouTube, all the behind the scenes stuff. And when I even talked about Kate Winslet breaking fucking records, holding her breath, James Cameron taking a good decade to make new underwater cameras and new underwater technology. Hey, you know what? Say what you want about the man, but again, he's raising the bar. 
Looks like it must have sunk pretty low. With a dying thirst to be the first, could it be? Yeah, it's him, James Cameron. I plan on going into Avatar 2 expecting one thing, to be fucking entertained. Despite whatever flaws the first Avatar may have had, look back in that the past 13 years and what we've gotten, goddamn the past couple years, and just by comparison, the movie is a fucking masterpiece in terms of storytelling. Yes, I know the bar is very low, just like James would say, the bar is pretty low. I don't see the bar yet. Looks like it must have sunk pretty low. But if I'm going to drop $15 or $20, fucking dollars, take my kid or my nephew or my sister in to see this film, I just want to be entertained for two and a half and three hours. Take me back to Pandora. Take me to a better place of just big dragons and water and special effects and big action sequences and things of that nature. I never go into a Transformers film or a Fast and Furious film or even a Top Gun Maverick film. America, fuck yeah! and expect Shakespearean acting. I don't expect like The Northman, which is a fantastic film, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm a blue collar idiot. I know what I freaking like. I would watch Avatar 15 times in a row before I watched The Northman again. I'm not saying The Northman is a bad film by any means, but just I need action explosions. I'm a simple idiot and I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm a simple man. I love the film for what it is and I acknowledge that it has flaws, but truth be told, I don't fucking care. I just want to sit back, grab a big ass fucking thing of popcorn, a big friggin' soda, and for three hours, just ignore the outside world and just enjoy a movie about big blue aliens without being politically pandered to. Simple as that. I'm hoping James Cameron can keep the same message, in a sense, the same message of the first film. Just keep modern 2022 politics out of Pandora, and I'm a happy camper. Simple as that. It comes out in Christmas. I really look forward to this film. I don't give a shit how stupid it is. Fuck it, sometimes we just need stupid. I just want to have fun again. Okay, so that's it. Hope you liked the video. I know this is probably like an extended trailer breakdown video, but as I said, I wanted to piggyback into my quick review of the first Avatar being remastered. Whoever you are that subscribed to me, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Love you guys. And yeah, I have to edit this stuff and just check in the time as I always do. I'm on freaking break. Just want to throw some water in my hair real quick and like just change t-shirts and shit instead of wearing the same. Rick and Morty t-shirt, having a ton of fun, as always, doing YouTube stuff for anybody watching this, but Avatar 2, won't lie to you guys, I'm probably going to see this shit at least three times, if not four times, in a theater, because no matter what happens, Avatar does one thing, it does one thing well, and for a theater experience, it entertains, and that's all I fucking want in 2022, is to just to be goddamn entertained, okay, so, I'm going to check my watch, pull up Bender, finish my Cranberry Vodka, you know how the deal is, how this works. Ready? Let's finish this and let's go. This calls for a drink. Ah, delicious. Okay, I'm heading back to work.